Pretty much anywhere you go, some sort of fishing opportunity exists. Yet, depending on where you're at and who you're with, that opportunity might be perceived drastically different. Sometimes it's a source of entertainment, sometimes it's a source of food. The methods and motives of various anglers differs greatly. On the same river, you may see someone drifting a small midge to a trout, delicately unhooking it, snapping a pick for the gram, and carefully letting it go. And just around the bend, you might have a guy drinking a beer in a lawn chair, hucking worms out under a bobber. He catches that same trout, smacks it over the head, and eats it for dinner. This is just one example of a difference of philosophy amongst anglers, and it goes way deeper than that. For me and Marcus, we find different fishing cultures fascinating and we love new experiences. So this new series is dedicated to exploring the various methods of angling within our home state of Montana and trying to catch as many species as possible. For us, anything goes. For the first episode of Anything Goes, we're hitting the hard water. It's winter in Montana and our lakes and reservoirs freeze up, allowing for an angling opportunity that some think is the most boring form of fishing possible. Ice fishing. I think they're here. This fish is being a prick. We're on a big reservoir, created by damming a large river to control the flow, produce irrigation for agriculture, and hydroelectric power. So this dam was finished in the 1950s. Right away, the state started dumping in tons of rainbow trout, and it was a hit amongst a lot of people. From the 50s to the 80s, it was one of the state's premier rainbow trout fisheries. People caught a lot, and they were big. In the 60s and 70s, the state also tossed in some kokanee and chinook salmon. These, however, never really took off. At some point in this timeline, someone tossed in some yellow perch, and by the early 80s, both the anglers and the state were going, this is pretty neat. There you go. It's getting hot. And then comes along another bucket biologist and illegally dumps some walleye into the mix. Walleye are predators. And when they got dumped into this system, their main prey was the small rainbows and perch. Add to the mix the fact that it takes 50 pounds of prey to produce 5 pounds of walleye. You can see where this is going. Fast forward to present day. Now you have an okay trout fishery, a perch fishery that has some big ones, but not a lot of them. That's the biggest <laughs> perch I've ever caught. And an okay walleye fishery with a lot of little ones. Right now, we're targeting yellow perch. Living in a trout mecca, I'm always excited at the chance to fish for a different species. I always used to associate ice fishing with being really boring, cold, and catching very few fish. That being said, I've been doing it my whole life and I continue to go back every winter and go out on the ice. I admit though, we never really put a lot of effort in. We used to just go out blindly, sit on the ice, and hope that something swam by. But this year, I watched as Michael went all in on ice fishing. He would be watching videos, learning about tactics, reading forums, and this prompted me to do the same. We both ended up investing in electronic fish finders, not to be confused with the old Montana fish finder that we previously employed. We're still learning, but it's so much more enjoyable to have an actual plan and knowing whether or not there's fish in the area you're fishing. For perch, we use maps to find the old river channel and target depths between 30 and 50 feet. For rigging, I like to keep things simple. Either a small spoon or a tungsten jig will do the trick. Tip that sucker with a maggot and jig near the bottom. Ooh. That's a big dog. Nice. Get out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Another had to beat. work for that one. They're just hanging out on the bottom. He came right off the bottom and I started reeling up, jigging up, jig, 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 jig. Boom. Montana doesn't have any native panfish. So whether you're fishing for perch, bluegill, or crappie, it's likely a manipulated system. And while sometimes that seems unsettling, it's hard to argue with the opportunity that these systems provide. Often little ponds get stocked, including ones inside city limits. It's pretty fun to be able to just head outside and be fishing within minutes. One of the cool things about ice fishing is a lot of these towns, probably the town that you live in, you can just come out here. This is just, I mean, we got a mall right behind us. <laughs> um, just got a couple holes drilled and we're gonna kind of explore the area and take you along with us to see if we can't catch some fish. A perk of fishing near town is when the fishing isn't good in one spot, you can easily relocate to another. Aside from catching some of the smallest bass I've ever seen in my life, the fishing was definitely not great on this pond. So we packed up and headed to a new piece of city water. spots because they offer me an opportunity to get quick fishing sessions in. Something that I often take advantage of after work or even during lunch hours. Just don't tell my boss. The level of excitement this fishery can bring to a kid is also a reason I'm a huge fan. Seeing my niece Sylvie light up catching a perch is pretty dang cool. Oh, a little bigger. Nice. Cool. Every once in a while, you get lucky. And that's what happened this day when we traveled to eastern Montana. We found the crappie and the fishing was unreal. Got him. Yep. Oh, crappie. Slap. Crappie, just like every other fish we've Got caught so him. far, are not native to Montana. Crappie. But again, this is a highly altered fishery. In a future episode, we're going to tell the story of how this reservoir was created, one of the biggest reservoirs in the United States, how it was filled with non-native fish, and how a huge industry has grown around it. But right now, we're just going to focus on pulling in some more of these tasty slabs. We're set up here on a big mud basin. During the winter months, crappie move into spots like this and form large schools. We're on them. This is sweet. Oh man, I've never experienced this. Look. 
feeling. <laughs> the muddy bottom allows the fish easy access to insect larvae and invertebrates for food. And after eating bugs all winter long, these fish had no trouble choking down a spoon with a minnow head attached to it. A lot of fish hit the ice and we filled our limits. And let's not forget the main reason people love panfish. It's in the name, pan fish. These things are incredibly tasty in the frying pan. Having a group of friends to share the catch with makes it that much better. Anything Goes is just getting started. We have a lot of areas to explore and a lot of stories to tell. No! <laughs> Oh my God. And while Michael and I are producing the series, we're gonna have a lot of other faces joining the mix. Put it right on so head. stay tuned as we travel across the state and attempt to tell some cool stories. Missed them.